Good afternoon. We're nearly there. We're nearly at the coffee break. Uh, my name is Jonathan McAuliffe. Uh, I'm working at the Fifth Columbo Science Ground segment here in ESAC. Uh, I'm presenting here on behalf of myself, not just myself and Santa, but also the rest of the SGS team, many of whom are sitting here in the room. Uh, we're, work uh, we're working on a mission called Bepi Colombo, and Bepi Colombo uh, is going to go to Mercury. It will only be the third mission to go to Mercury. In the 70s, Mariner 10 did uh, three flybys uh, in 74 and 75. Then, almost thir over 35 years later, the NASA mission Messenger uh, ar arrived and spent four years in operation around Mercury. And as you may be aware, last Thursday, Messenger impacted the surface of Mercury, ending the, what was a spectacular mission. Now we have to wait nine more years for Pepe Colombo to get into orbit. Uh, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're, going to, we're hoping to use GIS technologies here in the SGS in order to plan the science operations for Pepe Colombo. <laughs> the workshop so far has been mainly about data. We have data. Uh, how do we munge it? How do we process it? How do we represent it? How do we share it? How do we use it? So th it's kind of a given in many of the talks and many of the tutorials that you have data. Um, but we're looking at this from a different perspective. We want more data from future missions, in this case, Pepe Colombo. What data do we want? When can we get it? These are questions, well, the first one at least, what data do we want? It comes from the scientists, from the scientific community. When can we get it and when best can we get it? This is also in the realm of the scientists, but it's more, sometimes it's more of an engineering question in terms of the operational profile of the mission, uh, the operational conditions of the spacecraft in the environment that it's in. Uh, tools, often uh, instrument teams and science teams develop their own software to answer these questions using uh, toolkits like SPICE or other geometric uh, auxiliary data toolkits. Uh, when can I expect this data, or sorry, what can I expect from this data? And this is uh, not just a scientific question, but an operational engineering question uh, when you consider uh, how much data volume is this going to take up on the spacecraft? When can I get it down? Is there data latency? Can I get this data back uh, in, a, in an efficient uh, or in a short period of time? I've answered all these questions. Who do I tell that I want this information from? Now, if you're involved in a mission, that's a pretty uh, easy answer, uh, question to answer and that is the science ground segments. As I said, I'm working on the Bepi Colombo science ground segment, but uh, each uh, European planetary mission has a science ground segment or a, uh, a science operation center. Many of them, or most of them, are based here at ESAC. So that's who you tell, and the, uh, the departure or the difference that we're hoping to implement on Bepi Colombo relates more to how you tell them what you want to do. Uh, on previous missions, this distributed uh, means of providing data to the uh, science ground segments has been followed. And the, the size of the device on the screen represents, in a very crude manner, the amount or the fraction of the workflow that was performed by the uh, distributed instrument teams. These giant servers indicate or try to demonstrate that a lot of the work was done in the institutions by the instrument teams using software that they developed themselves to identify geometrical conditions, when they can do their science or do their operations, when best to do these operations. Um, so software was produced by ESA, by the SGSs, and distributed to them to check their timelines. They would identify when the observations would be done. They would build manually, uh, in ASCII format, uh, timelines that they would then check locally with the software provided to them by ESA. They would then send this to ESA, where it would be uh, wrapped up and constraint checked here uh, centrally, and if everything <laughs> was okay, it was sent to the operation center in Germany for upload to the spacecraft, if everything was okay. If everything wasn't okay, there was a loop and loop and loop of iterations. These green arrows are meant to, uh, it was a lot of overhead and it was very prone to mistakes. These green arrows are meant to represent auxiliary data. In this paradigm, each instrument team was often needed to go and get the auxiliary data themselves. One minute, well, okay. I'm gonna run over, I'll tell you now. Uh, this is what we wanna do with Bepi Colombo. We wanna centralize things, okay? We want most of the work to be done in the SGS and the instrument teams just to connect to our system and, uh, and use it. Great, so where's the GIS? Well, at the moment, we're prototyping a concept called the observation catalog, which will allow all instrument teams, not just remote sensing, to access, the, uh, to access our systems uh, and identify targets that they want to observe, uh, see what has already been observed, what has been programmed to be observed. The auxiliary data in this paradigm will be presented to them from our system. We will collect uh, messenger data, in this case, Mariner 10 data if it's relevant, but also, uh, data from Bepi Colombo that is still under the proprietary period, that is not in the public domain, but it will be in our systems, so uh, science teams planning future observations will be have this, uh, this information available to them. Um, we're already prototyping some of this. We're using the same, uh, same ASCII-based tools that previous missions have used, and these 
uh, do the simulations and they output ASCII files. They output information about the footprints of the instruments. This is something I'm experimenting with Mario De More from DLO, who you've seen already today. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, we, they don't do any, they don't use uh, GIS protocols, okay? They use, uh, sorry, they use uh, ASCII file formats. We're identifying at the moment what is needed to turn these into GIS uh, formats. We're also looking into tools like CartoDB. Uh, we, what we would do, we take the shape files in the previous image, we load it up in CartoDB, we, ident we let the PIs, uh, the science teams, identify the objects they want to observe, we do a spatial, uh, include a spatial diff, and we get exactly what we want to observe. Uh, of course, we're also asking the question, how do we deal with 3D? We've seen a lot of inf interesting presentations um, in, this, uh, in this talk about how we might deal with that. And, well, I came to this conference really, you know, yeah, we want to use GIS, don't know what it is, but hopefully at the end of this, uh, this workshop, we'll have a better idea of what we want to do. Thank you.